Hello everyone, good afternoon. Sanjay Mishra with Talligent, and uh, I'll take about 15 minutes to go through our product open book, uh, leave five minutes at the end for questions. Uh, one housekeeping item, uh, we're giving away a hat at the end of this presentation, so put your business card in the hat, we'll have a drawing afterwards, and you get to win a very nice Stetson at the end of this. Uh, so, uh, Talligent open book, uh, we're focused on showback, chargeback, billing, and capacity reporting for OpenStack clouds. Our primary focus is on OpenStack. We also acknowledge that this is primarily still a hybrid cloud environment, and so from that perspective, we also integrate with VMware and are able to collect usage data from vCenter servers, as well as with AWS. So uh, we can collect AWS usage data, and then we have a mapping scheme within our product that lets you take AWS usage, VMware usage, OpenStack usage, and roll it up under a customer and project hierarchy and produce a consolidated bill of cloud usage across those different flavors of infrastructure. So I'm going to focus primarily on our administrator interface. We have two views into the product. Uh, the admin interface is targeted towards the cloud operator, the financial user, so the, the, the team, the individuals, setting up the integration into OpenStack, setting up the integration into VMware, into uh, AWS, Defining rate plans and products, uh, setting up customers, setting up the billing scheme for customers, the customer to rate plan assignment, uh, looking at invoices, distributing invoices or reports and so on, and then obviously a reporting function and, and um, uh, an analytics function. There is another uh, interface for the product that's targeted towards the customer or the project user, showing usage by customer and project, Given the uh, short period of short amount of time that we have, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. If you'd like detail on that, please follow up. Uh, we have a booth uh, towards that entrance, and uh, you're welcome to stop by and, and uh, dig deeper into the detail. So uh, there's a dashboard view that gives you an overall uh, view of spend and consumption across your cloud. Looking at your current unbilled charges, the system calculates unbilled charges continuously, uh, and so at any point in time, you can come in and get a view of Unbuilt charges across the entire cloud, by category, by customer, by tenant, invoice history, 12 month totals. Um, in getting into the details of the, the billing, the rating, the, the reporting, let me start with what the end product of the, uh, the, the entire uh, function within the software is. So this is a sample invoice. It's generated for a customer called marketing. And um, I, I wanted to talk about just the, uh, the ability to take multiple OpenStack projects, roll them up under a customer. So in our view, a customer is uh, who receives a bill for usage, uh, and then projects obviously are the, the container within OpenStack resources, within which OpenStack resources are being consumed. So within OpenBook, OpenBook manages customers, OpenStack man manages projects. Within OpenBook, you can create a one-to-many hierarchy of customers and projects. Uh, and, and consolidate billing and, and usage across, uh, across multiple projects. So in this example, I have, uh, I, I have usage broken out by OpenStack region. This customer has project admin, Cloud Foundry, and trial rolled up under them. And then within those projects, we're keeping track of usage across pretty much anything that can be provisioned or consumed within OpenStack. So any OpenStack service, uh, can be translated into a product. We have a metadata-based uh, billing model where you can take attributes uh, for service instances as, they, as they've been created and define products based on that. I'll go into that in a little bit more detail, but uh, just to uh, talk about the things that we can bill for and how we bill for them. So floating IPs, I'm billing based on a five, I'm, I'm charging $5 a month per floating IP. So we're keeping track of the floating IPs provision, how long they were in existence. Images, billing based on a gigabyte month basis. Instances billing on instance hour. Uh, this can be quite a bit more fine-grained in that you can define small instances, medium instances, and so on. And, and as we talk about products, I'll, I'll talk about that in more detail. Load balancer rips, again, billing $5 per month. Uh, volumes, I'm billing uh, based on a gigabyte month metric. So again, as part of our integration with OpenStack, we're keeping track of, of uh, resources being provisioned, resources being reconfigured. Uh, and, and then applying the rate to that to produce the, the final invoice. Uh, we, we produce invoices, the default behavior is to produce uh, invoices on a monthly cycle, so on the first of the month, invoices slash reports, depending on the context that you're in, uh, get generated and, and they, they span across a, a month period. 
Uh, before I leave this, let me also throw up an example of what a consolidated invoice would look like or a consolidated bill would look like if you were combining usage from within your OpenStack cloud as well as usage from AWS. So this is a customer that, is, um, that has projects in, in both environments. So uh, my AWS usage, again, is shown by region. So here's my uh, AWS US West region. Multiple projects within this, within this customer. So in OpenBook, you can take uh, AWS accounts and tag names and tag values and use those in any combination to define a customer and, and, and tenant or a customer and project mapping or roll up within, within OpenBook. So uh, for our example, we just, these, these are tenants that are defined within OpenBook. We're taking AWS data and, and recategorizing it this way. In this context, we're obviously, we're not providing a rating function. We're taking data uh, charges as they're pre-calculated by AWS and presenting that single pane of glass, that consolidated view across all your, your different environments. And so here, uh, my AWS usage is broken out, again, by category of spend, multiple projects within here. And similarly, if I scroll down, here's my OpenStack usage now. This is an OpenStack project, and I'm billing for floating IPs within OpenStack. So what, what does it take to get this going and set up? Uh, the, first, the first step, once OpenBook is installed, uh, is to configure the integration into OpenStack. So let me pull this up. Service managers are our term for the wrapper around a data source. So an OpenStack, a set of OpenStack APIs, uh, an AWS uh, bucket, uh, VMware vCenter uh, server, all of those uh, represent service managers. They're sources of data, basically, within the system. A um, couple of points to note. One installation of OpenBook uh, can connect into multiple OpenStack clouds. Uh, it can connect into multiple vCenter servers. It can collect, uh, connect into multiple AWS uh, endpoints. Uh, so there's a multi-tenancy built, built, in, uh, built, built into the product in that way. So for our data collection, uh, we have uh, a, a very low impact, lightweight integration into OpenStack. All the data that we use for our uh, billing and reporting functions, we collect through the OpenStack APIs. So we, we ask for access to the Keystone admin port, uh, Keystone admin user, a member of the uh, admin project. Um, and then beyond that, we, we discover the rest of the service catalog and, and can connect into the service APIs. If Solometer is available in the, in the environment, we, we can collect data from Solometer. In the absence of Solometer, we can still support 90% of the use cases that we typically encounter uh, for, from a showback char chargeback perspective. So uh, billing for services as they're provisioned, as they get reconfigured, as they get deprovisioned, all of that is available in, in either scenario, with or without Solometer. Some of the metric-based billing, so things like billing for bandwidth or billing for CPU hours, uh, those, um, the, the, the units as they're, as they're provided by Solometer metrics, those obviously have a dependency on the, on the metering API. There's also an option to push metrics directly into OpenBook. So you can define custom metrics. We have a REST API. Uh, rich REST API, I'll touch on that very briefly. Uh, you can push metric samples directly into OpenBook, build a billing model around that. So bandwidth, for example, is, is a common thing. If the neutron metering agent is deployed and solometer is available, then we can, we can consume those metrics. Uh, if not, if you're collecting bandwidth metrics elsewhere, you can push them directly into OpenBook and, and build based on that. So beyond that, uh, the integration, we, we support Keystone version three, so in a Keystone version three context, you can scope the data collection down to a particular domain. Uh, if you have multiple domains that you want to collect data from, you set up multiple service managers and, and, and span across the environment that way. And then uh, anything, for the most part, that can be provisioned in OpenStack can be reconciled into OpenBook and, and can be built for. Uh, these are the services that I'm collecting data for. Uh, in this context, if OpenStack, I mean, again, if Solometer is available, I can, I can collect metrics as well. Uh, we have a rich set of metrics that we can pull over from Solometer. Any of these is available simply for a reporting function, if that's what you, if you, you want to look at metric aggregates by tenant over time, uh, and obviously for billing as well. Uh, and then here's the option where you configure how you want usage to get rolled up into, into customers and tenants. So you have the option of either having OpenBook automatically create customers for tenants as they're discovered in OpenStack, or you can, you can do a, a, a mapping within the product to define the rollup. And I'll talk about that in just a second. And uh, then how, how do you want to uh, collect data from OpenStack? Do you want to collect it from the metering API or directly through the service APIs? Having done that, the next thing you might want to do is define a, a project to customer mapping. So 
Customers, again, as I mentioned earlier, are owned by OpenBook. They're an, op uh, they're an OpenBook uh, construct. Uh, these are the OpenStack projects, and I've just defined a mapping. So I'm rolling up all of these projects under the customer sales, and I'm rolling up these two projects under the customer IT. You can change this at any time. Uh, when you ch if you change this during a billing cycle, then the usage uh, over partial periods get gets allocated appropriately depending on when the change was made. So I've set up my customers, I've set up my, op my integration to OpenStack, I'm collecting usage data. The next step that I would uh, typically do is to define my products. So products layer on top of either services or metrics. And I was mentioning earlier, we have a metadata-based billing model. So you take services and, and metadata values and define products around them, right? So in uh, the, most, uh, I, the most interesting example might be billing for compute. So we see multiple models out there. Billing for uh, instances by flavor and image tends to be the most uh, common. Uh, and so here's an example where I've defined uh, products corresponding to the different flavors. So I've got medium and small OpenStack uh, instances. And the way that these are configured, they build upon the base OpenStack instance service. And I've defined a filter that looks at the flavor and metadata attribute and classifies it appropriately depending upon the value. So uh, medium, uh, flavor medium equals uh, 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 a medium OpenStack instance, and then uh, similarly, um, sorry, that should say, uh, flavor small would correspond to, um, to small instances. Another model that we commonly encounter is splitting apart these configuration values and billing for them individually. So we have some customers who want to bill for CPU, RAM, disk, and image as individual attributes. And so in this context, I have products based on those billable attributes. And the way that this gets configured is I choose one of those uh, numeric values as a billable attribute. So in this scenario, I have vCPU set up as a billable attribute. I'm counting up the number of vCPUs. I'm keeping track of CPUs uh, of, of instances being resized up or down uh, and updating this value appropriately. And then at the end of the month, there's a charge per vCPU for the month. And, and that's, the, that's the billable metric. Um, similarly, for uh, uh, storage, billing by gigabyte month and so on. Uh, and so configuring products, depending on what the, uh, what the appropriate uh, uh, combinations are for metadata attributes. And then the final step is defining a rate plan. So within OpenBook, you can have multiple rate plans. The elements by which rate plans vary are whether they apply to a customer or reseller. We support a reseller model where you can have another level of, um, uh, another layer in the hierarchy where resellers have subsets of customers under them, subsets of projects. They can set their own rates, they can define their own products, they can manage their own customers. So for, in, in billing for resellers, we aggregate up the customer usage and generate a bill based on that. For customers, the other uh, factor by which rate plans vary is currency. So we support multiple currencies within the application, and the way that we handle that is by matching customer currency to the rate plan currency. So a customer is onboarded, they have a currency associated with them. When it comes time to calculate charges, we either look for a default rate plan that, that matches the, the customer currency, or uh, an explicitly assigned rate plan. So you can actually set up uh, individual rate plans by customer, if, if appropriate, and, and vary the rates that you're charging customers based on the rate plan that's assigned to them. So in setting up the rate plan, um, you're basically pulling products in. You're choosing what state you want, it, uh, you, you want to bill for. So uh, everything other than compute has the state of just being in existence. A volume has been provisioned. It, it existed for a certain amount of time. I'm billing for that. Compute can have the additional state of being powered on or being in use. And so you have the ability to, to be a little bit more granular in that context and only billing for uh, compute instances when they're powered on. Beyond that, you can vary rates by region. So US West, you have one set of rates. US East, you have a different set of rates. Uh, London, Singapore, you have different rates. And so you can, you can decide uh, how, how you vary your rates by, by region. And then my rate. And so when it's all said and done, you end up with something that looks, uh, looks similar to this. I'm, I'm, I'm tracking usage, I'm applying the rate, and I'm calculating a charge. Uh, let me briefly touch on uh, the API. So everything that, uh, that I can do through the UI obviously is available through a REST API. Uh, we take an API first approach. Uh, at, as it currently stands, the API is actually richer than the APIs, uh, than the UI. So just as an example, uh, this API documentation is built into the application. If you navigate to slash openbook slash API doc, it's all here. 
Uh, and, and you can actually uh, exercise the API directly through here. So if I click on invoices and I want to get my invoice detail, uh, one thing that we see commonly is uh, uh, OpenBook does the rating and the invoice generation, but something else does the invoice presentation. Maybe you're in a context where there's, uh, there's a whole set of services that um, uh, beyond OpenStack that's being consumed. And so we can provide the rating function, we can provide the invoice generation function, but the actual invoice, invoice presentation, the payment processing and so on may be happening elsewhere. And so this API supports that kind, of, uh, that kind of integration. So if I wanted to pull all the invoices for the marketing customer, uh, I can run this call through here. Here's what it would look like if you uh, invoke the, this API endpoint through curl. Here's what it would look like uh, in terms of the actual URL. And then here's the detail, it's uh, JSON. Uh, and I've got invoice header information, I've got invoice detail. So you could take this and, and, and render this in, in whatever way you chose. Uh, you could also use this to drive dashboards within uh, other applications that you have, or even integrate it into Horizon and, and have a uh, billing panel that's showing usage uh, by customer, by tenant, by region, et cetera. Um, full set of functions, uh, pretty much anything, like I said. Uh, I mean, everything that's available through the application is available through the API. So we, we think of the API as a product in and of itself and, and pay a lot of attention to uh, its functionality and its, its usability. Uh, down to three months, let me uh, uh, just quickly skim through some of the capacity uh, reporting capabilities that we added recently. So our view is the, the complete history of activity within the cloud that we're collecting to drive the billing uh, function uh, is also very interesting from a, from a usage and consumption and, and trend perspective. And so think of the, the capacity reporting that, that, we, that we provide as another view into the same data set. Um, so looking at your overall compute capacity, uh, either across your, uh, your full environment or by, by, um, uh, by cloud and region, uh, the the uh, legends here, if this is visible, so the blue line is showing me what my usage is. Uh, the orange, the dotted orange line shows me the, uh, the actual uh, CPU or RAM on the machine, and then the red line is my, my hard limit, right? From a scheduler's perspective, that's taking the over allocation ratio into account, uh, and that's showing you what the, what the uh, total available capacity is. Looking at it another way by host, so uh, drilling down at an individual host level, seeing uh, where things are standing in terms of uh, uh, CPU, RAM, and disk. Um, looking at how the scheduler is doing its job, so how are VMs being allocated across hosts? Uh, this is it's a small data set, so you know, it, obviously it, 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 it'll be a richer view with, with additional hosts in there, but uh, these are individual hosts. Um, it, the, uh, the, the gray area is the available capacity. The smaller boxes are the individual VMs. And if I drill down, I can see this uh, in, in a little bit more detail. So individual uh, VMs on the host, how much CPU or how much RAM, depending on which metric I'm, I'm slicing this up by, uh, is, is being allocated and, and what's available. I can play with this. I can do some degree of simulation and forecasting. What if I change my allocation ratio on RAM to one to one? What does my available to, um, uh, to used uh, capacity look like? Uh, what if I played with it in the other direction? What if, what if I allocated my RAM one to two? W what does it do to uh, the, uh, the usage and, and, and consumption across the environment? And, and same thing, like let's say I, I, ch I change my CPU allocation to one to 10, <laughs> you know, uh, get really aggressive with it. Um, service consumption trends give you an overall view of uh, consumption across time. So uh, my current snapshots across OpenStack services, and then we, by default, maintain a year's worth of trend data. So looking at what my consumption trends have been over time uh, and, and seeing what's growing, what's, uh, what, what might be shrinking. And then finally, orphaned infrastructure uh, gives you, um, uh, solves kind of a source of annoyance within OpenStack. You could delete a project, and if you haven't deleted the resources within the project, they kind of live out there as orphans, and, and uh, uh, most folks have some process for dealing with that. In case you don't, uh, this is a view that shows you everything that exists within OpenStack that doesn't have a tenant associated with it. There are some additional filters that we apply to it. Ports by default don't have tenant ID associated with them, so we drill down a little bit deeper, but the idea here is everything that's not owned by a tenant and is most likely a candidate for cleanup and deletion. Uh, last thing I want to touch on in the 30 seconds I have remaining is uh, just the customizability and the um, configuration within the application. Uh, the application lends itself well to white labeling and, and branding, so setting your company information, 
the logo, the application name that you want to display here. Uh, we support payment processing. We can, um, uh, we can integrate with PayPal, Stripe, et cetera. Uh, customizing currency codes, we have a customer who, to avoid the politics of dollars and cents, uh, they have their own currency unit and that's what they, they charge customers for in a private cloud context. So you can define your own currency unit and, and charge people for those. Um, country codes, uh, customizing the emails that uh, get sent from the system, uh, changing the templates and so on. So at the end of the month, uh, an email gets sent to customers with their invoice, you can change what that looks like and so on. Wow, right on time. Uh, thank you.